So this is more intended for those people who are uh, beginning um, and haven't used the parts before. Um, so what I have here is one side of the carrier, for example. And what I would like to do at this point is basically just separate left and right so that we can go ahead and put in some um, um, supports. So what I like doing is I just like taking one of the 3 by 9 sections, which is a side section of the old from the old part sets, which I've kept uh, because I need it for the front of the carrier to fill a couple holes. So it made it from the, uh, I think, the second release all the way to this release. Um, and I'll show you what I do with that. So if I take this part and I just flip it on end and I put it into the center of the carrier like that, you're going to see that it, perform, it, it basically forms like a little bit of a bridge here. So now what I can do is I can take another hull section and place it here. So what we have now is a bridge between left and right sections. And I can take this side here, I can actually just duplicate that. I'll dry you get you get used to playing around in the hangar here at this scale. Um, I, I'm using Dead Beef's uh, editor mod, so it does it, it, it. If you can't place a part, drop it closer to where it should connect, and then just take it and put it where it should go. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier. Um, and like I was mentioning, uh, to build the carriers, you're going to want to use Dead Beef's editor mod because it just expands the the area that in, in which you're allowed to build and that's crucial when you're making something this large. So what I do now is I have these two hull segments which will eventually be joined and I built them separately. So now what I can do is I can take some of my struts and I can start crisscrossing the, uh, you can even go from one end to the other here uh, or I can go from end to end. So in some cases you want a little bit of stability in the form of an X brace. Um, you may want some stability from section to section. So here you can see the first section, that would be the second. If I go from the first section on this side to the second, second section on that side, and I do the same thing over here, an X brace in here. Okay, then moving forward, if I do the exact same thing inside internally here, okay. So I'm making basically horizontal X braces on the inside of the ship. At the ends of the ship, where the torsion is going to be up and down, I'm making vertical X braces. And it's just the way I do it. I mean, I, I, I have noticed a difference in the strength, so it does help. It, the, the, the ju it does justify doing it this way. Um, and then there's other methods that you could probably conceive yourself. Uh, I find that this way uses the least amount of parts, so this is the one I, one I use. So I disconnect this part that originally connected to the centerpiece now, drop it, take this out, trash it, bring this back in, connect it. You now have a completely stable and secure beginning to your ship. If you need to add further reinforcement, you can do it from in here, or you could do it from uh, to up to the higher parts inside the ship. So that's uh, pretty much how I build the hull up. Um, Again, what I've mentioned in the guide, always always put hull sections in first. The way the code works for the um, move to water is it will go by the first place part. It will track altitude by the first place part. So if you place a hull section first, it will track altitude from there. So when you drop it, it won't sink. Uh, some guys have started, like the old days, uh, uh, you would make the um, con tower and build your way down. Um, if you do that, the ship is about 15 meters higher than it should be, and when it drops into the water, it capsizes and sinks. So the best thing to do is start with the bottom, make a nice strong bottom foundation, and then work your way up. So I'm not going to go through the entire process here of creating a carrier, of course, because that would take forever and I want to get on to more interesting things. I suggest putting supports on the engine simply because if the bottom, being that it's so close to the water, gets nudged, um, it's not going to fall or it's not going to break. Even though the connections are very strong to begin with, uh, you don't want to have uh, you know engines falling off unless you know a major catastrophe happens, and of course. So now that we have the engines on board, we can now uh, focus on on um, 
getting the rest of the uh, drive line, I guess you would want to call it, working. So I would just simply go right from engines to, uh, you know, a lot of my rudders are hooked onto the back part of the superstructure of the ship, not necessarily under the bottom. For the example that I'm trying to, you know, give you here, I'm just going to go ahead and put on the rudders here. Um, again, if you're placing a singular rudder, do it with the the um, the lock on so that you can at least get it directly in the middle. If you're not in the middle, it would be off. So that way you at least know you can line it up with the very back of the ship. And uh, you can you can align it so that it's not only you know up and down, but at the very back end of the ship like this. And then you're relatively right in the right position that you want to be in. So for this example, we're just going to, you know, we're not going to go with a bow or a stern or anything like that. We're just going to go directly to uh, the rudder controls and have the engines on here. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I need the, um, the conning tower to actually get me into the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount it anywhere. Um, again, if you don't have a place, if you're not, if, you, if you're mounting to the part of the hull here, of course, it's going to be off center because there's no mounting sections in the center. You could always put down another part that has a uh, connection, a node connection on it, and make it connect to that, um, and you'll have, end up with a pretty much the same uh, result. You see, so it's basically right in the water already so when it starts the game it's not dropping into the water causing it to sink um, <clears throat> again these bottom sections are classified if you read the, the help document that i actually put online these bottom sections are actually classified by the code as floating sections and they will never sink um, unless they're damaged in future versions of the code that i'll be releasing that has supports damage if they're damaged, they will then start to sink. But uh, currently, the current version of the game, they will never um, incur a sinking effect. Even if you submerged them, they would just pop back up and float. What what starts the flooding is if you have upper structure that then fills with with um, that floods. It will overpower the floating capacity of these floaters and it will push it underneath the water. So to get myself testing this, I can simply test the rudder function here. Um, I can test the engines. I never linked these, but uh, what we can do is we can just toggle them. Activate engine. So there's one engine. We can shut it down. We can reverse that engine's propulsion. Um, other things to take note of that you know I haven't seen in videos yet is the flotation system. You have simply three levels of flotation uh, of correction. Minus and plus with one minus and one plus is either more float or less float. Then you have more float or less float in a more moderate change and then plus and minus with a more severe change. So in a more severe change you're gonna see if I hit the triple plus and I set this up to, I think I set this to a maximum of two, you're gonna see that that front section is given plus two, and you're gonna see that it offsets it. Any, any corner you lift, it's going, to re, it's going to have the adverse effect or the opposite effect on the, uh, on the opposite corner. So um, if I set this down, and I believe by stock they're at 0.5 plus, which is what I've set it back to. If I flood this down minus two, you're going to see that it can handle quite a bit of modification here. Now if I start flooding this down to minus two, you're going to see that it really makes a big difference. Um, you can also add flotation to these and you're going to see that this part will be pretty much out of the water this part will be under you know above the water sorry this part will be under the water and this part will be like a pinwheel in the middle so at that point you may destabilize it enough to actually cause it to uh, sink so you have to be very careful well it's not going to sink but what you're going to do is you're going to tip it and you're never going to be able to write it again so at that point you know you're going to have to just end and and start a new carrier or get something big to flip it over <laughs> then it gets interesting. So uh, other things that we have on the ship are the horn. I don't see anybody ever using the horn. Um, it's there for fun. 
I don't expect anybody to use it. I put it there for a joke. An IVA, uh, the IVA system here is actually pretty neat. This is the captain's chair, and of course you have a little guy here. I, I think he's kind of like, um, you know, the little guy in Star Wars that sits beside Jabba the Hutt. That's him right there. Uh, so he's a little sidekick guy. The first guy to go EVA is that guy, so uh, he's like the little uh, go-getter. He's a gopher. Anyways, so we get a little bit of a view in here. Uh, kind of neat. There are, you know, some different effects going on in here and stuff, which kind of, ma kind of makes it interesting. Um, and uh, I figure you guys will figure, you know, it's it's more for immersion than for actual gameplay value, but uh, I think I'm going to add some controls in here at a later time. So going back out, uh, we do have the ability to um, um, turn now without using motors. Um, we we got the rudders working. Um, all my credits and my thanks uh, go, are on the actual forum page. So, for people who've helped me out in the past, uh, and, you know, give, give me a few pointers and, and kind of basically donated uh, their time to helping me out, um, I've listed them there. Uh, so, take a look at that. And I appreciate all the help that I've ever gotten. And I try to help in return, I, I try to give as much as I get. Uh, it's not always the case, but you do your best. As speed increases in the water, it tries to force your ship under the water um, and what you want to do is come over here and and give it plus three on either side and if that doesn't bring it up to the right level give it another plus three on either side like that now check out your level at the back check out your level at the front it's, if it's relatively close you're getting there so let's give it a little bit more and a little bit more perhaps so that's a lot closer now than what it was. So we're at 35. Let's activate two more engines. And let's see what this hull can do in terms of speed. And you're going to notice different splashing at different speeds. So. So if we take a look at the flotation now, it looks good on that side. This side, it looks pretty good. Now, if we have a little bit of turning going on, you can you can trim up the rudders just like you could any other control surface. good now so we're moving along at a pretty good clip here again if we're if we're splashing like crazy at the back you could probably give it a little bit of float okay just give it a little bit of float don't do too much what your goal is is basically to get the um, Get the hull out of the water a little bit more. And stop the float. Stop the splashing. Splashing really doesn't do anything. It's not going to break anything on the ship. Um, it can't possibly go faster than what... Uh, it would need to break it. So um, all it's going to do is cause lag and slow your computer down. So I stopped the splashing and my frames went up by about 5 frames per second. So now that I've balanced the ship out for the speed I'm going at, which is about 45 meters per second, it's uh, splash free and lag free. When you try to turn it at high speeds, it's going to be resistant to change. If, you're, if, you're, if you slow down, I think there's a sweet spot. Um, down around, you know, under probably 20 meters per second, that would allow you to, uh, you know, turn at a quicker rate, you know, closer to 10 meters per second, it allows for quicker turning. I think the max turn would be probably be around 5 meters per second, but uh, again, you can play with it um, and uh, find out what its capabilities are. Another way to increase turn speed is you'll notice on the um, on the narwhal that I released it has four rudders. 
what you have if you put an equal amount of rudders front and back you're going to have a side strafing rather than an actual turn uh, so what this is doing is is the, the, the nose of the ship is going straight wanting to go straight the back of the ship is actually kicking out so when you put rudders on the back you're kicking the back end of the ship out when you put rudders on the front you're kicking the front end of the ship left or right the back wants to go straight if you put rudders on the front and the back it's going to side strafe the entire ship and cause it to slide side to side rather than turn so what you want to do if you want a little bit of turn on the front you can throw a rudder at the front maybe a small rudder or you could put a singular rudder at the front where you have like four rudders on the back that should give you a little bit of con more control um, and you could also try different uh, you know depending on how your ship is balanced you're gonna need different trim settings so just trim accordingly uh, if you right click the tower like from the old uh, carrier you still have the set r uh, rudder five degrees port or set rudder five degrees starboard. That's basically if you want to do a slow, nice turn while you're, you know, your, you know, your goal is over here. You don't want to jam on the rudder and cause an unbalance. So you can simply tell it to turn right very slowly or left very slowly.